file is going to um, be about 15 minutes late, so we're going to go ahead and get started with the pre-meeting. Um, so a bit of a change. <laughs> I know some people, um, this is the first time they've been in the meeting room, um, so we don't have to scream quite as loud or look this way. So it's a little bit more casual, um, uh, and so it's a little bit easier. So I'll try to, if you have questions, you can just raise your hand again in the same way, and I'll get to you. Um, but that's about it, right? I just I just want Carter's chair to be lower than mine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but so yeah, so pretty casual um, for our pre meetings, and of course we'll get back into our work sessions as well um, in here. So I did want to say if anybody does feel uncomfortable still, they're more than welcome to wear a mask if they'd like to. I don't want anybody to feel not uncomfortable, but if you'd like to, um, you're more than welcome to as well. So we'll get started. I don't have the agenda in front of me, Carter. I apologize. Yes, okay. <laughs> Indoor sports complex. Let's get that started, Carter. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everybody. It's good to be with you. Um, we have had the opportunity to talk just a little bit about the possibility of this facility here being uh, located in the vicinity of the event center. And maybe we could switch to that uh, exhibit that shows the relative spacing with the event center um, that you'll see here in a second. Um, we, we wanted to, uh, before we got too far ahead of ourselves and um, in terms of putting together the, the agreements and so forth that would make this potential relationship happen, we wanted to give you the opportunity to ask some questions and uh, you know feel good about this possibility. We have uh, representatives from the the nonprofit that would be uh, putting this together here tonight to answer questions that you might have. Uh, in a nutshell, the idea is that uh, pursuant to a lease or a license instrument of some kind, uh, the facility that you see here would be um, constructed in the neighborhood of the event center. Um, and, and as we get to that point where you can see exactly where we're talking about, the idea that we have in mind is that it would be effectively adjacent to the driving range, if you can picture that, uh, in, in a dirt parking lot, currently a dirt parking lot, um, that essentially is, you know, north and east of the event center and a lot of the paid parking that we have uh, up there right now. So, um, <coughs> The, the idea is that, that the city would retain the ownership of the dirt and for a nominal uh, lease of some kind, um, the, uh, the sports complex would be located on city dirt and operated private, albeit potentially uh, as a nonprofit. And so uh, with that in mind, um, We'd like to get started on putting, yep, that, that's, that's the one. Gosh, thank you so much <laughs> to our guests. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hard copy. Wow, what is that? Um, uh, we'd like to get started on the instruments that help put this relationship together. And uh, if council is comfortable with that, you can expect that in a formal meeting, uh, a formal instrument would be brought to your to your uh, attention to uh, formally deliberate and, uh, and, uh, and you know, hopefully pass if you're comfortable with this concept. So we're asking for your green light on the concept. We got, a little, we got work to do to put pen to paper and, and, and you know, the, the ideas together uh, in, in a formal instrument for future deliberation. Questions, okay. comments? Yeah, Steve. I actually have a question on that, Carter. I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but were we not talking about attaching this? Or was this, and I don't know, maybe Brad can answer this question, but were we not discussing this on the trails side of the building up there? So I'll defer to Zalima and to Carter. So there were actually three options that we talked about. <laughs> The idea was uh, that we would offer a, a few options for our partners to consider. And uh, the option that you see being passed around the table is what they would 
prefer in terms of relative location to the event center. Um, it's possible that you're going to hear as a result of the, the study that's taking place on the event center, the Fort Wyoming Center, um, that uh, similar facilities like this or expansions to the footprint of the event center might be advisable, but we're very premature as far as that recommendation or those series of recommendations are concerned right now. They had an opportunity to visit with Visit Casper not too long ago on a very preliminary basis. This facility will not be attached in terms of the construction that they are proposing at this point in time. So uh, that, that's not a feature of what we're recommending. Lisa. Is this specifically for basketball and volleyball? The, the central focus is court sports like that, volleyball and basketball. Um, would y'all like to address any other perspectives on that uh, question by chance? We'll have six courts uh, available, but I mean, available for whatever activities um, may be desirable. We'll have, we have a turf option that we're looking at, so we can put turf on one half of the facility at, during certain times. Um, so I, I don't think it's a, it won't be a dedicated basketball and volleyball <coughs> facility, but um, that's kind of the primary design. Steve, how much, <clears throat> how much of the rest of that area will wind up being paved? I see the building footprint here, but will then all of the rest of this be paved for parking around it? At this time, yes, that's the idea. The reason I'm asking that is this is the prime parking area for the CNFR Cowboys and their trailers mm -hmm. and their horses. I think that's something we ought to consider because sure. if that's all paved and unless you fence it off, you're going to wind up with horses tracking across there. And then I don't know where you're going to wind up forcing the, the contestants to go because then they're going to have to come here or down here and then getting the horses all the way around the back end. So I feel like that's something that should be considered. Sure. And, and I would say, Mr. Mayor, Councilman, um, Pursuant to the overlay that uh, that I was hoping you could see tonight, um, with regard to the meets and bounds that are being put together for this project, that dirt parking lot will likely be consumed by the lease property, if you will, for lack of a better way to describe it, uh, as you can see with the red line that yep. encompasses yep. that area. So that would be privately leased land, so to speak, if all this goes through. I, I guess I would defer to Brad in terms of whether or not you think that would be a significant problem for CNFR. I could not answer that all that well. It will definitely uh, uh, defer, deter from the, tr the parking for the trailers because that's where all the trailers are at. In the dirt Councilman lots. Councilman is correct. He is correct on that. Is there another place? Since it's not going by the trail center, is there something further that direction that they could park? I, I think the whole master plan of the parking up at the event center complex probably needs to be reviewed, especially if this goes in, because that's going to affect all of your traffic there flow throughout the entire complex. So uh, our traffic flow right, right now is not very good. So Mr. City Manager, so I know I just whispered to you, so maybe I'll make right. I can be public about it. <laughs> I don't want to make it too, too weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's the two other dirt spots that are obviously there to the left. Right. And is that an option as well? Uh, Mr. Mayor, all of that space is available for staging. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and the city owns the land that surrounds the area as well. So, I, you know, I. So those are alternatives. I, I would hope there is. Yeah, because there's certainly a bunch of space, which makes this a real nice 
possibility as it relates to an expansion of this kind okay. with regard to the services that would be available up there. Great. Is there another? Can you pull up the, like the drawing itself of what the inside of the building looks like? Sure, absolutely. So I guess the reason I was asking whether or not it's going to be in close proximity to the building or even attached, it, are there are there concessions inside of there? There are. Yeah. So as you can see on both sides, it's a wing building. So we'll have two green chair metal buildings on the outside, and they'll be knuckled together. In that internal knuckle is going to have um, concessions, um, seating, and other amenities to accommodate okay. the um, activities. That was the main reason I was asking that. We do, however, anticipate that there'll be a need for and an opportunity for great synergy between the event center and our facility. Um, we assume that those concessions will not be adequate to feed all of our participants. And additionally, we're going to have to coordinate um, what the event center space is doing. It's unlikely we'll be able to hold events during CNFR. Um, and we'll likely be looking at some potential for shared parking and you know have some leniency on parking and the use of that surrounding area so we haven't quite figured out the extent of our ability to meet the food demand of these athletes and their families but we do anticipate that overall we're going to need to synergize with the event center Other questions, comments? Oh, go ahead, Tasma, sorry. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Um, there are six courts going from, I guess, north to south. And then there's also the courts going the other way to provide the volleyball. And as Tim said, the, the plan is that the turf potential is just for one wing. And the increase in costs on the turf, you probably saw it on the pro formas, is a million dollars. Although that wasn't our initial intent, we are responsive to the community's need for turf. And so we have added that in as a likely addition to the facility. Um, but it will be one half just because uh, the scheduling of multiple sports activities. Amber. Um, can you all speak to it? I know um, Carter mentioned that uh, it would be privately managed um, and uh, likely by a nonprofit structure. Can you give us a little bit more of an outline on how you're envisioning the, the structure of the organization to work um, and the management, ongoing management? That's what. <laughs> <laughs> so we are forming a nonprofit, and um, it will be. It's very much a nonprofit. It's for the community and economic benefit of, of this area in the state of Wyoming. Um, it, the nonprofit will have a board. The operations of the actual facility, we are not able to serve that role. We'll put that out for an RFP. Um, the consulting group that we hired to help us get to this place is SFA. SFA. And they were previously um, involved in the facility that was imagined at Platte River Commons, which I think was a turf facility. So they are somewhat familiar with Casper. They do have the ability to manage the facility, um, and you probably saw that in the pro formas. We have not. Um, we're, our understanding is the um, entity that operates the event center also has that opportunity, so when we get to that, um, we're just going to put it out and see who thinks they can do the best job. It so will not be us. Okay, <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's it's not probably going to be a nonprofit. It is going to be. It, a it will absolutely be okay. a nonprofit. There is no profit component to this project whatsoever. Thank you. Do you get? I noticed that, and I may have overlooked it someplace in your plans, but I noticed restrooms for the men and women but I didn't notice anything that I would call locker rooms for teams to come in, half times, things like that. Uh, 
What was your vision at that point? So you can see along, um, we'll, we'll call it the south walls, those actually have um, team rooms. Um, and they will be, I'm not sure they're built out specifically to spec. Um, we still have to build that out with um, SFA. But they will have team rooms in there for whether it's locker rooms or um, just staging areas, whatever it might be for team needs. How would, uh, let's say, a team comes in from out of town and they want to take a shower, change, yada, da, da, da. How do you, is that going to be part of this or are you expecting them to go someplace else all hot and sweaty and in the middle of the winter? And um, being that it's a youth sports complex, I don't think that we would have that accommodation, just being that it's youth sports with high school you don't always have that option to, to shower, sometimes you do. Um, but it hasn't been something that's been brought to our attention yet. And SFA, they do this nationally, um, and they are the ones that put this together. So from their expertise and experience from a national standpoint, they haven't seen a need to put showers in there. Um, it could be something of discussion, but I think for being a youth sports facility, they probably don't have showers in there. Interesting. Well, I've done, I've done travel ball with my son for six, seven years, mm -hmm. and every facility I've been to, they don't have any facilities for showers. It's it's basically right. get in, bathrooms have bathroom facilities and things. Hmm. Get in, play, and then you're on your own to shower somewhere else. So it's pretty pretty common. Yeah. So Tasma, Tim, and I don't know. Jessica. Jessica, sorry. What is your guys' timeline for construction? Well, our timeline has been disregarded. <laughs> <laughs> the experts indicate that we have about six months of cleaning up the current design and getting the construction and all of that stuff that I have no idea and Jessica's an expert in. Um, so we were shooting to start construction in 2022, and then it'll take about 12 months to complete the project. Thank you. Appreciate that. I know we got a couple other items. Are there any real quick questions? I have a comment for those two. I will not be at the meeting next Monday night. Can you bring this up to Jim? See how he feels about this? Okay. He's the new commissioner. Place Roger. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming down. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. So before they take off, let, let, let me just ask a culminating question here. <laughs> uh, do we feel comfortable moving forward with some of the formal steps that need to take place and work and so forth and preparation for that? Can you, can you be more specific? <laughs> uh, Mr. Mayor, what I'm suggesting is as it relates to a, a lease document or a license document that they, you know, bring something forward for you to consider on a formal basis. Yep. Just a consideration, yeah. I think, is what yeah. I think it's I'm, the report. I'm waffling because that CNFR is a big deal for us. Well, it's not necessarily going to go in that spot. Yeah, though. and I mean, it can be you're not. Well, uh, can you speak to that? So, go Mayor, ahead. You were, you were, when you asked, are there other options, I believe that the plans that we're seeing here have been designed specifically around that block, correct? So we're not talking other options for CNFR parking to go, not other options for this building to go. Is that? That was my, my impression. What my comment was based, can we have other options for CNFR parking okay. versus what we were talking here? Is what, that was my. And, and Mr. Mayor, my response would be that would be absolutely what I advocate to both CNFR and the event center. I, you know, just because we've got a once a year use of that lot, uh, albeit a big and important use, don't get me wrong, I, I don't know that that should be a game changer with respect to whether or not we have a facility that with regard to the synergy that this can potentially produce, uh, we will have a whole new economic energy as a result that uh, I don't know that we'll be able to harness elsewhere, frankly. Um, and so, I'm really hopeful that, uh, that we can get behind this and see it happen and, and work through the inconveniences that, that you know, CNFR will have to help us navigate. 
when they get here in June each year. And I hope we keep them forever, by the way. The vice mayor has some. So then one last question on that, as far as that goes, out the back of the event center, that fence line that runs mm -hmm. on the east side, we own the property on the opposite side of that fence, correct? Mm -hmm. That could be an option. Absolutely, as, as could the space across the street. We, there's a lot of land up there, and that's, again, another value for this possibility that I don't think many other places can offer in our community. So we have a uh, tentative move forward. Keep it moving, and then I think there'll be a conversation, Steve. I think you're going to have that conversation next week, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. So we'll continue it. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks, guys. I know we have four minutes before we get to the meeting. We might be a little late, but I do want to um, tackle OID parking lot food and truck. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay. And, and I don't think we're going to need a whole lot of time okay. on this one. Um, I wanted you to be aware of uh, the um, Office of State Lands and Investment, which helps facilitate meetings for the State Land Board, which, as you know, is, is comprised of the five elected officials and so forth. Our meeting in Casper on the 13th of April as a part of their inaugural meeting uh, for the new state building that will be in full swing and opened and everything else by then. Uh, one of the things that they want to hear more about is what <clears throat> our plans are for using the OID parking lot, which we know it as the uh, Goodstein parking lots that we just recently uh, rebuilt and reconstructed and those kinds of things. Um, as it relates to food trucks. Those of you who have been on the council a while remember the food truck conversation with fondness, I'm sure. <laughs> One of the conversation elements of that conversation was what role can the Goodstein parking lot play in facilitating food truck access? And uh, with regard to that conversation, we move forward pursuant to the direction of the day to build some design ideas into this parking lot so that food trucks could be facilitated on a much more organized and efficient basis that includes setup, that includes not compromising other parking, and, and so on. And so uh, the, the other element that we will be describing to the uh, State Land and Investment Board is uh, what we plan to do from a permitting standpoint in order to have those spaces reserved for those who uh, want to come and take advantage of those services that are available. Art Walk's a good example. The Art Walk goes right through there, and, and they've expressed interest in having food trucks available and those kinds of things. Um, so I just wanted to give you that heads up, let you know that that conversation will be happening on a level that I didn't expect. Uh, I did not expect to have to visit with the governor as to you know, what we plan to do with this um, space with this very narrow application in mind. So uh, with that in mind, I just wanted you to be aware of that and have that in your, in your, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Amber. You can finish your sentence. I was just uh, saying. I had nothing of value I'm ready for a trail off. Trail off. I lost my train of thought. I don't even know what we're talking about. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, it, is the slip board only wanting to know about food truck permitting specifically? No other sort of well other type of permitting that we are intending to offer in that plot? I thank you for that question. I think another thing that will be of interest to them is whether or not alcohol will be an element of service from their lot. Because remember, we are leasers on that space. That's all state land. Um, and so they had that concern. Originally, their concern was if we were trying to make a food court out of it, and it was going to be a constant mm -hmm. profit enterprise and uh, a, a private business sort of, you know, expansion, if you will. And I, I, I have told them that has never been the case, particularly adjacent to David Street Station, who was designed around that concept very, very specifically and, and uh, deliberately. This is not a new David Street Station, and that will be the message that I'm, that I'm bearing. Yes, we want to facilitate events, and yes, we'd love to have added energy because of this construction, but I do not see it replacing David Street Station or being a competitor or 
duplicating services that are more effectively delivered at, at the station. So, so this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this is happening um, next week. This uh, it is okay. right. Um, so, I, so, as I understand, we don't actually have a permitting process for any use of that space laid out at this time. Is that generally we're still in the midst of working through the details of? What a process would look like. Um, Mr. Mayor, Council Member, we do have food truck permitting processes and it is uh, relegated to the Center Street corridor mm -hmm. right now. And so we would have to expand that program, if you will, to include those seven spaces at the uh, OID parking lot. And for events, special event? Right. Rentals for up rentals, if you want to call it a rental, reservations of that of that space. I mean, I'm looking at the MOU. It seems like we were pretty clear about our desire to use this lot for these things from the beginning. And also looking at the MOU, it really says we can do that, as far as I can tell. I'm not a lawyer, but it says we can do that as long as we're not breaking the law or uh, doing conducting any sort of ultra hazardous business, which I'm not sure what ultra hazardous the means, sword, but this is probably sword. defined, this is probably defined Fire somewhere, breathing. I'm assuming, <laughs> and you know, I wouldn't consider alcohol service to be ultra hazardous, uh, assuming that we've gone through the correct, you know, processes that we use right. throughout the city, everywhere else. So it seems to me that, that you know, I, I hope the outcome of that conversation is that we have a clear picture of uh, what, what process we can use and reiterating that this has been of the conversation from the beginning in the initial agreements that we made with the state. I would completely concur. And Absolutely. You, and you don't know about the use of alcohol, you said, yet on those sites? They, they, Mr. Mayor, they may have real specific direction about alcohol um, provision on their property. Uh, and so if, if that is direction they want to give, then it's, it's quite possible the agreement doesn't cover that aspect of this all that well. So they could have a special so, event, like Amber was saying, and that special event could say, well, we, we're going to have like, you know, black tooth beer or whatever possible or whatever like that. And they would be like, oh, this isn't going to be on our side. Yeah. And, and, and the reality is, Mr. Mayor, if indeed we were talking about a major event, I, I don't know why I wouldn't recommend them to go to the David Street Station for stuff like that, okay. you know, because they hold liquor licenses, given the special provisions that the statutes now allow. I just don't see the parking lot being all that great of an alternative to the Dave Street okay. Station. Asphalt gets hot in the summer. What I'm, what I'm wondering about is, are they interested in potentially finding out if this is going to be a Monday through Friday right. lunch for city employees <coughs> type situation? Or state employees, yeah. Uh, that's, I meant state employees, yeah. yes. And I don't foresee it being that because that then winds up being in direct competition with all of the brick and mortars that have taken the gamble to come down there. So I don't know as I would like to see uh, food trucks whip in there every day as you're talking about basically a, a money-making proposition. So I would agree. Anything else? People are leaving. Anything about the gender review? I, I don't think so. Okay. Nope. I'm good. Thank you, everybody. I just have a question for oh, yes, you. Yes, sir. Do you have any change or is it come about? Because Lisa and I have.
Thank you for everybody for being patient. We were just finishing up our meeting, uh, pre-meeting. Uh, before we begin our meeting, though, uh, a regular meeting, I just wanted to address that uh, Councilman Nell um, and I talked this afternoon, and uh, of course he did say he was not going to be here tonight um, for obvious reasons, but um, you know we're looking at what the next few weeks will be, and had a good conversation, and he wanted to wish everyone uh, thank you for all their uh, prayers and thoughts, and we continue to support him not only as a council, but as a city. And so just want to let you know he's, they're recovering and, and they're doing the best that uh, they can in the circumstances, but he's very grateful um, for all the, the prayers and he uh, just requested more prayers would be great if you can do that for him. So thank you. Before we begin the evening, I'd like to remind everyone to silence their cell phones at this time. And I now call the April 5th, 2022 regular council meeting to order. The chair would entertain a motion by minute action to excuse the absence of Council Member Nell. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilman, Council Member Kathy. <laughs> that was all of them at the same time. <laughs> Seconded by Council Member Pollock. Sorry, <laughs> please cast your vote. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm completely thrown off by that. <laughs> please record the vote. All members voting aye, the motion passes. Ooh, that threw me off. Okay. Council meetings are also televised and can be viewed on cable uh, channel 192. Would you please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The chair would entertain a motion to approve by minute action the minutes of the March 15th, 2022 regular council meeting as published in the Casper Star Tribune on March 21st, 2022. So moved. Moved by Vice Mayor Friel, seconded by Council Member Sutherland. Any amendments? Please cast your vote. Please record the vote. With Council Member Johnson's abstention noted, motion passes. Chair to entertain a motion to approve by minute action the minutes of the March 15th, 2022 executive session. Second. Moved by Council Member Gamroth, seconded by Vice Mayor Friel. Any amendments? Please cast your vote. Please record the vote. Oh. Lisa. There you go. Please record the vote. Council Member Johnson's abstention noted. Motion passed. Chair to entertain a motion to approve by minute action the April 5th, 2022 bills and claims as audited by City Manager Napier. So moved. Moved by Councilmember Ingebretson, seconded by Councilmember Pollock. Any abstentions or nay votes? Uh, yes. I'll abstain from anything involving Wellborn, Sullivan, Mech, and Tooley. Thank you. Any other abstentions? Please cast your vote. Please record the vote. Councilmember Johnson's abstention noted. Motion passes. So now we'll turn to the bright spots in our community. Uh, National Service Recognition Day. We are pleased to welcome representatives from Serve Wyoming. Um, and I'd like to welcome uh, Shelley McLean, uh, McAlpin, and Carrie uh, Owen to say a few words. Come on up. Yeah, I, and I've got all their names, Shelly. I can announce them or you can do it. It's up to you. Uh, Mayor, City Council, thank you for letting us join you today. It's that time of year again where we're excited to um, promote what we do and what our AmeriCorps members do throughout the state. And um, instead of me talking this year, I would like our chairwoman to talk, Melissa Staley Cummings. Hi, Melissa. Hey, how are you? Good, good. Okay, I'm Melissa Staley Cummings from Casper. And on behalf of Serve Wyoming staff, commissioners, and Wyoming National Service members, thank you, Mayor Pacheco and City Council members, for recognizing the work of our 4,500 Wyoming AmeriCorps members who dedicated a year of their life to address critical needs in our state. 
Serve Wyoming believes in volunteers and sees firsthand the impact they have on our community. We bring people together through service. We have a statewide call center and online volunteer center, and you can find us online at servewyoming.org and click on volunteer, where anyone can be connected to volunteer opportunities and agencies across Casper and the state. Serve Wyoming is Governor Gordon's Commission on Service. It exists by federal statute and state executive order. We exist for two reasons, to award and monitor federal AmeriCorps awards and statewide volunteer center. AmeriCorps members serve on the job assignments throughout the state for a year, while receiving a stipend at the end of service, receiving a scholarship valued at close to $7,000. 200 plus members serve a year, 4,500 since it began 25 years ago. And I'm one of those early AmeriCorps members. Um, Eight million in Wyoming scholarships. AmeriCorps is a low cost option to reduce the effect of a struggling economy, and it helps prepare Wyoming citizens for future employment and educational opportunities, using skills and developing new ones. Intensive results-driven service to meet emergency, educational, environmental, public safety, food insecurities, service learning veteran and military family services, and other pressing needs across the state. From Wyoming Conservation Corps, teachers, after school programs, domestic violence shelters, and so on, AmeriCorps members get things done for Wyoming. When their service term is up, they also receive an educational award valued at $7,000. Thank you for recognizing the valuable contribution to Casper and our state. Thank you so much. I do have a proclamation. Um, do I have a handheld mic or do we just have this mic? Do you know by chance? If not, I'm gonna read, I'll read it from here. I'm gonna read the proclamation from here and then I'll have you guys come up here and, okay. and we'll do that for pictures if they want, okay? I'm getting to that age where I might need reading glasses, but I'm not there yet. I'm sandwiched by two older people, so. <laughs> like we don't Very handsome older people. <laughs> Whereas a hallmark of the Amer American character is national service and it is central to how we meet our challenges and it expands economic opportunity by creating more sustainable, resilient communities and providing education, career skills, and leadership abilities for those who serve. And whereas AmeriCorps and senior corps participants address the most pressing challenges facing our communities, from educating students to the jobs of the 21st century, to fighting the opiate uh, epidemic, to responding to natural disasters, to supporting veterans and military families. And whereas natural, na national service represents a unique private sector partnership that invests in the community solutions and leverages non-federal resources to strengthen community impact and increase return on taxpayer dollars. Whereas participants in AmeriCorps and Senior Corps serve in more than 50,000 locations across the country, bolstering the civic, neighborhood and faith-based organizations that are so vital to our economic and our social well-being. These participants demonstrate commitment, uh, dedication, and patriotism by making an intensive commitment to, serve, to service, a commitment that remains with them in their future endeavors, and whereas AmeriCorps shares a priority with local leaders nationwide to engage citizens, improve lives, and strengthen communities and is joining with the National League of Cities, the National Association of Counties, Cities of Service, and local leaders across the country for National Service Recognition Day, acknowledged on May or April 5th, 2022. Now, therefore, I, Ray Pacheco, the mayor of the city of Casper, Wyoming, do hereby proclaim April 5th, 2022 of, as Casper's National Service Recognition Day and encourage residents to recognize the positive impact of national service in our community and to thank those who serve and, find, and final way, find ways to give back to their communities. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the official seal of the city of Casper, Wyoming to be affixed this fifth day of April, 2022. Thank you so much. Come on up.
Don't you remember you could take pictures? Jack of all trades. Right again. Always perfect. Did they work? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor, for your reading glasses. <laughs> now is the time we invite anyone in the audience who wishes to speak with the council to come forward. As stated on the first page of the agenda, we do ask the following to please state your name and address, direct all questions and comments to the mayor and only the mayor. No personal attacks on staff or council will be tolerated and council will not respond to any personnel matters. Those will all be referred to our city manager. Questions posed by speakers may or may not be responded to by council members. Uh, presentations will be limited to five minutes and no duplication of speakers are allowed. Uh, nor there will no, there will no, no nor will no time extensions be permitted. <laughs> oh. Please note that public hearings and ordinances each have their own comment period, and please hold your comments on those items until we reach them. I'm gonna have to break mine out. They've been sitting on my desk. Anybody? <laughs> All righty, we'll just move right along. <laughs> I get this one. These are okay. I can see this one. <laughs> Please read the consent agenda title. Establish April 19th, 2022 as the public hearing date for a new microbrewery liquor license number four, Brew Story, LLC, doing business as Frontier Brewing Company, located at 150 West 2nd Street. Thank you. The chair would entertain a motion to, by minute action, establish the public hearing date just read. So moved. M moved by Vice Mayor Friel, seconded by Council Member Sutherland. Any abstentions or nay votes? Please, oh, let's go ahead. You can abstain, okay. Uh, please cast your vote. Please record the vote. With Council Member Pollock's abstention noted and all other Council Members voting aye, the motion passes. I now declare the public hearing open for the consideration of Local Assessment District Number 158, Coates Road Asphalt surf Surfacing Improvements. Mr. City Attorney, do you have any exhibits? Thank you, Mayor. We have four exhibits tonight. Exhibit Number 1, Correspondence from Andrew Beamer to Jay Carter Napier, dated March 9, 2022. Exhibit Number 2, Affidavit of Publication, is published in the Casper Star Tribune, dated March 21, 2022. Exhibit Number 3, Correspondence from Suzanne Gully to the City Clerk, received before April 1, 2022, and exhibit number four, roll filing dated March 25, 2022. Thank you. Mr. City Manager, do you have a report? I do. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Um, this is the final step with regard to a fairly lengthy process uh, pertaining to the assessment being created or having been created to resurface Coates Road. Uh, council will recall that uh, a portion of Coates Road, as you can see here on the exhibit, exists within the limits of the city. Uh, this was a, a county road initially that was deeded to the city, and then county uh, maintenance extends from the uh, city's portion to the bottom of the exhibit, as you can, as you can probably tell. Uh, the construction, the reconstruction, if you will, have, has taken place. The county has decided to construct the remaining portion of Coates Road, which is not included in this assessment, uh, incidentally, as a part of the, uh, the mobilization that took place to, to, to redo this, this thoroughfare, this, this arterial. Um, you will also probably recall that the assessment is designed around the partnership that was divided essentially in three ways pertaining to the, the portion that's in the city's limits. Uh, the county agreed to take on uh, approximately $48,000. The city agreed by virtue of one cent 16 to take on a third of the project. 
and the neighbors in the area agreed to take on a third of the project as well. The 48,000 of which was divided among the property owners on a proportionate basis pursuant to the ownership, uh, the acreage ownership in the area. Uh, your role tonight is to consider the assessment. You're in a board of equalization capacity, if you will. And if you agree and approve, uh, that would essentially launch the first reading of the ordinance that puts that assessment role into law. Uh, the assessment of which we would base our billing to the neighbors in the area. There are options with respect to the way in which um, the neighbors can pay that you have seen outlined in your memo. Uh, the good news is that with regard to the ultimate construction cost, we do believe that the per neighbor cost will be less on, a, on an acreage basis. And so with that, Mr. Mayor, that concludes my report. Thank you. Council will now listen to public comment. Public hearing comments are limited to five minutes and no duplication of speakers will be allowed. At this time, I would ask those individuals who wish to speak in favor of the LAD number 158 to please approach the lectern. Those who wish to speak in favor. Okay. At this time, I would ask those individuals who wish to speak in opposition to LAD number 158 to please approach the lectern. Those who wish to speak in opposition. Okay, there being no one to speak for or against the LAD number 158, I now declare the public hearing closed. Please read the ordinance by title only. An ordinance ratifying all actions previously taken concerning City of Casper, Wyoming, local assessment district number 158, confirming the proceedings, assessment role, and assessment therefore, assessing the amounts in said role on the property in said district, creating a lien therefore, and prescribing the priority therefore directing the certification of said role by the city clerk and transmittal thereof to the city treasurer, prescribing notice that said assessment shall be paid and the terms thereof, providing for the payment of said assessment, creating a special and a separate fund therefore, providing for the collection of delinquent assessments and prescribing various details concerning said provisions. Thank you. The chair to entertain a motion to approve on first reading the ordinance just read. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilmember Pollock, seconded by Vice Mayor Friel. Discussion. Uh, Councilman Kathy. I am trying to figure out, we finally got this map late today, but as I counted, it looks like there are only 17 properties listed here, but on the sheet listing the property owners, there are 18. Am I missing something? Mr. City Manager. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Councilman, I would suggest that the 18 properties are the, uh, is the number you want to go with and likely the math that was determined in terms of what each would be assessed. Um, if you'd like more specific direction, however, I'd have to defer to either Andrew or Alex. Okay. I can would you with like Andrew later on. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. Okay. Going on. Great. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Yeah, go ahead, Council. Go ahead. I did have one other comment, too, is uh, the one stipulation here, uh, the letter that we received from Ms. Gully, uh, to a point, I can, uh, I can see her point. Uh, the amount of acreage doesn't really matter. You have access, and access is access. And so I guess I would question as well why we, and I realize it was probably in the first one, but... Uh, at this point, and I really hadn't thought about it that much, but at this point, I guess I would kind of question why are we going by acreage rather than there are 18 people using the road. Why don't we just divide it by 18 and go on? Mr. Mayor, Councilman, I, I don't know that I can give you um, an encyclopedic review, you know, as it relates to what which um, calculation has more merit than another. But what I can tell you is, is that uh, during the creation of the assessment, um, there were a number of neighborhood meetings that were held and a number of methodologies that were discussed. 
And uh, while there are certainly a number of directions that could have went, this was the methodology that was largely adopted by uh, the majority of the land being represented and their owners uh, in the project area. So, so what you're telling me is, is this formula was actually developed by the people that are being assessed and even in this group of nine, we have sometimes dissenters, and so basically that, in essence, is what Ms. Gully is then. Mr. Okay. Mayor, I, Council, I think that's a fair assessment. The, 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 the issues were vetted, the, uh, the approach was vetted, uh, discussed, okay. and, uh, and we, we got a very, very clear majority to move forward. Very good. That, at least her concerns were addressed here, so I thank you for your explanation. You betcha. Any further discussion, questions? No? Okay. Any amendments? All right. Please cast your vote. Please record the vote. With all members voting aye, motion passes. Council will now discuss the resolution authorizing a contract for police contractual services. Uh, because this is not on the consent agenda, it will be open for discussion by Council. Please read the resolution by title only. A resolution authorizing a contract for professional services between Off-Duty Management Incorporated and the City of Casper. Chair to entertain a motion to approve the resolution just read. So moved. Second. Moved by Council Member Inga Bretson, seconded by Council Member Pollock. Uh, Mr. City Manager, report. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council. Pursuant to your guidance and request, uh, this item was brought forward on a non-consent basis to allow for uh, more discussion as it relates to uh, the, the difference in which this service offered through our, de police, our police department uh, would change. Um, the basic idea, as you probably recall, is that we are engaging this, this partnership with um, off-duty uh, management so that the efforts of our internal staff, which surprisingly amounts to about 25 hours a month, would be recaptured for regular routine police kinds of duties. Um, furthermore, this relationship brings to the table uh, a fairly significant amount of liability coverage, uh, a great portion of which did not exist in the current way in which we conduct business in providing this service. Um, the other thing that, that I certainly really appreciate is that this service also includes the billing and the invoicing and the following up of bills that aren't paid in such a way that the department and the individual gets paid first and the invoicing and the billing and, and those efforts necessary to bring those dollars into the organization and to the company that we're working with gets covered thereafter. So there really is no way that the city will be shortchanged, as it were, with regard to the dollars and cents that are co collected for this service. And furthermore, um, for a premium charge of 7.5%, initially you recall that it was uh, proposed to be 10%, um, we get not only a, a wonderful assistance in regards to chasing down the, the various uh, efforts necessary to make sure that this, this happens in an effective and efficient manner, but we also bring to the table the liability coverage, which was a, a benefit we have not previously enjoyed. So our request is that you give this favorable consideration, and uh, with, without a doubt, if you have any other questions, we'd be pleased to try to answer those. Okay, discussion or questions? Yep, Council Member Pollock. Thank you. Um, I did request for this to be... Um pulled from consent just to give um, users an opportunity to weigh in with any of us that they may want to um, because the, the fees are structured such that it, the cost for users of this um, service will go up. Um, so I just wanted to give the folks who do use this service an opportunity to discuss that with it, but um, I didn't hear from anyone. I don't know if any of the rest of you did, but um, you know, being, being that that's the case, um, I'm in support of this. Any further discussion? Yep, Council Member Gamra. Thank you, Mayor. The only question I had was, 
It sounds pretty time intensive as it currently stands to do process all the invoicing and uh, you know lots of documentation, lots of paperwork. I'm curious, are there any other uh, instances or circumstances that the city is having to engage in similar types of paperwork? Sounds like we're going to realize quite a bit of cost savings in this instance. Just curious if we could realize that in other instances that may be comparable. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, any amendments? All right. Please cast your vote. Please record the vote. With all members voting aye, the motion passes. Council will now discuss the resolution amending and establishing city council member attendance guidelines at pre-meetings and work sessions. Because this is not on the consent agenda, it will be open for discussion by council. Please read the resolution by title only. A resolution amending resolution 17-155 and establishing new guidelines and procedures regarding city council member attendance at pre-meetings and work sessions. The chair would entertain a motion to approve the re resolution just read. So moved. Second. Moved by council member Egebretson, seconded by council member Sutherland. Mr. City Manager. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, thank you. Uh, th this is a follow-up item with respect to questions and dialogue that, that council has had with staff pertaining to potential policy changes that needed to be looked at and evaluated uh, as it relates to the, uh, to the subject that uh, was already identified. Um, I, I probably am not the expert in terms of being able to walk you through a lot of these nuances. However, uh, the city attorney uh, has put a lot of work into this and has been uh, the point, if you will, in this dialogue. And uh, I would defer to any questions that you might have to him, if I could. Does anybody have any questions on this to the city attorney? No? Oh, yeah, Council Member Gamera. Thank you, Mayor. No questions, but uh, I am hoping that the city attorney will be able to... Uh, I'm in agreement with everything here, but I'm not going to keep it all up here. So I hope you uh, <laughs> have memorized this and uh, we'll make sure that we're following it uh, when we get together for our meetings. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Uh, any amendments? Please cast your vote. Please re record the vote. With all members voting aye, the motion passes. Council will now discuss the resolution establishing security screenings at city council meetings. Because this is not on the consent agenda, it will be open for discussion by council. Please read the resolution by title only. A resolution establishing a policy regarding security screenings at city council meetings. Chair to entertain a motion to approve the resolution just read. So moved. Second. Moved by council member Johnson, seconded by council member Egan Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, th this is staff's attempt to capture some protocol direction, if you will, as it relates to the procedural difference that uh, members of our community will be experiencing when they come to council and, uh, you know, engage with all of you in this, in this forum. Uh, without a doubt, given that there is a procedural difference, we wanted to be sure that we had your direction at heart as we move forward pending the potential passage of this resolution, the body of which is meant to reflect your will and direction pertaining to issues that can be potentially pretty sensitive uh, given uh, some of the situations that staff can be subjected to and that citizens can be subjected to uh, as they pass through our detection system. And so with that, Mr. Mayor, if there are any questions, the city attorney would be pleased to take them. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Any discussion? Yeah, Council Member Gamroth. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I guess I have two. Um, I'm having a hard time finding it on my tiny little phone. I forgot my tablet. Uh, but I thought in the materials I had seen a, um, a definition of what a knife entails, and I thought I saw a discrepancy between the two definitions, one being two inch blade, the other being four inch blade. I was just looking for confirmation on that. You, you are correct. Uh, we, uh, we put in there and there was the concern about it because one dealt with a straight knife and the other dealt with a pocket knife. And I think uh, that is the discrepancy that goes there. With respect to the uh, 
the straight edge knife, they did not want it to have a four inch blade with respect to the pocket knife. It may, uh, it may not have been so concerning. It's, it's, it's the way I remember that because uh, we had discussed this, I think, with some of the, uh, the police department. Thank you. Uh, my follow-up question would be um, the intent of these uh, metal detectors, if it is to screen for deadly weapons, not allow those into the chambers. I'm curious. Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> um, uh, are they absolutely prohibited? I guess what authority are we giving to the chief and other members of the police department if somebody is not choosing to abide by um, these rules? Um, you know, is that a hard line? Uh, uh, if somebody insists on bringing uh, one of these items into the chambers, is that grounds for, you know, the police department to act upon um, enforcing this policy? Or uh, I'm just curious to know kind of where the line is. Thank you. Very good. Um, in, in fact, it is going to be a hard line. Now, they have multiple opportunities to avoid that line. Um, they can go back to their car, uh, take things out of their purse or bag or carry on. They can uh, empty their pockets, uh, come back in and be rescreened again. But in fact, uh, if they find that they have been flagged and uh, they are not successful in either going through a wanding or a visual check or going back to their the vehicle, then uh, they can be refused entry. That would be part of your policy here, uh, uh, consistent with the earlier ordinance and consistent with uh, various uh, other screenings around the town. Um, particularly, uh, you know, at that point, they would be subject to a trespass uh, violation if they were to proceed through and violate your policy if they were to come into the, uh, the, the city meeting um, and uh, not have cleared the screening. So that would be the basis for the, uh, for the police officers to act. Uh, it could also be uh, additional things such as a disturbance of the peace or something like that, depending on how it all plays out. Councilmember Johnson. Is this only for city council meetings or does this policy apply to everyday activity? Right now this applies just to city council meetings. So when there's no meeting then they can bring these items into the city hall? Um, it, it, as a matter of fact, it may still be a violation of the policy because the policy is pretty broad. It talks about any meetings within the, uh, within the city, uh, within city hall. But as far as the screening procedure, uh, that is going to be limited, uh, both based upon probably, uh, volatility of the meetings as well as, uh, manpower and as well as the magnometers that we have to, to just this room. Councilmember Gamroth. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, City Attorney Henley, as a follow-up to Councilman Johnson's comments, did we, in our past discussions, I thought I remembered us um, talking about the fact that state statute would not allow us to prohibit those items in City Hall as a whole, but we do have some authority to regulate their um, entry into these chambers. Is that correct? It, it is, and uh, again, the, the ordinance that we have it and that's been adopted and, uh, and in, is consistent with state statute and what the legislative body does in Cheyenne is to prevent it from coming into actual governmental meetings. And uh, so in that regard, this is really the, the one that we are actually, again, based upon practical concerns uh, and uh, minimal invasiveness, uh, actually verifying that people are not carrying when they come into these uh, meetings, either for purposes of safety and for purposes of not intimidating others who may wish to speak. Council Member Ingebrigtsen. So, when we have officers taking care of the security, how many officers are we needing? Is it one or two? You know, currently, I believe that they were thinking of, of two, but I believe they they may be uh, relying upon either a bailiff or uh, some other uh, person possibly even from uh, that's been hired by the event center in the future. We're not sure exactly how the staffing will go. We'll have to probably gauge that depending upon um, how fast things move along and how early people arrive. But since we haven't done it yet, that's still an open question, I believe. Okay. Council Member Kathy. We did receive a hand signal from the chief. He's planning on two. 
Good deal. Thank you. Oh, here comes the chief. Here comes the chief. <laughs> chief. Mayor, thank you for the opportunity to clarify. We're, we're currently trying to reduce uh, additional expenses to the city, and, and we are working directly with the bailiff of the municipal court, both the bailiff and the police officer um, that's assigned to the municipal court to, uh, to adjust their schedules to come and be able to man that without the additional incurrence of employment costs. All right. Thank you, Chief. Any other discussion or questions? Any amendments? Please cast your vote. Please record the vote. With all members voting aye, the motion passes. Council will now consider consent resolutions. Please read the consent resolutions by title only. 10B1, authorizing a release of local assessment district lien, LAD number 156, regarding 1614 Laramie Avenue, Casper, Wyoming. 10B2, authorizing a right-of-way easement with Rocky Mountain Power for the solid waste thermal lenses and CRL electrical service upgrades. 10B3, authorizing a final acceptance certificate with the Wyoming Department of Transportation for the Midwest Avenue bike lane and pedestrian development. 10B4, authorizing an agreement with Sheet Metal Specialties Incorporated for the wastewater treatment facility boiler replacement. 10B5, authorizing an agreement with Wayne Coleman Construction Incorporated for the Walcott Street Mill and Overlay Project. 10B6, authorizing a contract for professional services with Faro Technologies Incorporated. 10B7, authorizing the execution of an access permit with the Wyoming Department of Transportation for access to Palmer Drive from Casper Mountain Road. 10B8, approving the replat of Lot 12, Block 61, PT Commercial Tract 4, Paradise Valley Subdivision to create the stately addition. Thank you. The chair would entertain a motion to adopt the consent resolutions just read. So moved. Second. Moved by Council Member Pollock and seconded by Council Member Sutherland. I did hear the whisper, so <laughs> I heard I heard it though. <laughs> City Manager, would you like to comment on any of these items? Mr. Mayor, very briefly, uh, the, the item 10B5, where it mentions a reconstruction of Walcott Street, one of the questions I received earlier is whether or not that's the one-way, two-way conversion project, and that, in fact, is not. Uh, this portion of Walcott does not interface with the one-way area in our downtown, Great. although the numbers are very similar. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, please cast your vote. Please record the vote. With all members voting aye, the motion passes. Council will now consider minute action items. Please read the consent minute action titles. 11A1, authorizing the purchase of one John Deere 310 SL backhoe loader from Hanan Equipment, Casper, Wyoming, to be used in the Water Distribution Division of the Public Services Department. 11A2, rejecting the bid received for the Highland Cemetery Irrigation Improvements Project. Thank you. The chair would entertain a motion to approve the consent minute action I agenda items just read. So moved. Second. Moved by Council Member Kathy, seconded by Council Member Egan Bretson. Please cast your vote. Please record the vote. With all members voting aye, the motion passes. Thank you. At this time, we ask council members to bring forward relevant concerns and items of interest. Councilmember Pollock. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to update the rest of council on um, what's happening with the OYD advisory committee. I had a meeting for that um, committee last night, and we are really kind of um, just in the beginning phases of setting new goals for 2022. Um, so I'll report back to you all when those are a bit more finalized, but we did have a number of um, proposals generated from the folks serving on that committee, and there's uh, some new folks who have been welcomed onto that committee as well for the new year. So um, making some progress there in terms of um, honing in, specifying like what we'd like to accomplish this year. And I will, um, I think that will result in the formation of a couple subcommittees as well. Um, so I'll report back to you and that's a little bit more finalized. And that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you. Council Member Sutherland. Nothing for me tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Kathy. Uh, nothing this past week except uh, I do have a Hall of Justice Joint Powers Board meeting in the morning and 
Tough luck, North Carolina. Go Hawks. <laughs> that was a tough game. That second half was rough. <laughs> Councilmember Johnson. Nothing tonight. Councilmember Gamroth. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple things. Had a Casper Youth Council meeting on Sunday. Uh, went well. They talked about recruitment, uh, development of a social media content calendar, uh, development of a 10-year plan for the Youth Council here in Casper and across the state, and then also uh, connecting with their local elected officials. I believe we all got invites um, to, uh, you know, do short interviews with them for social media and um, just sort of their own uh, information gathering. So if, if you have the time, I'd encourage you to get a hold of them. Uh, Peak Rescue is a Casper-based rescue training company founded by Micah Rush, and it's made up of local professional first responders here in Casper, and they recently placed first in the 2022 CMC Grimp North American competition. Very cool. Uh, it's awesome to see how much influence those guys have in that uh, industry across the country, and it seems like even across the world, like uh, they're out there doing cool stuff. So uh, many props to Micah and the rest of those guys. And then there was a Trib article recently about the Rescue Rangers, uh, and those are volunteers at Metro. In 2019, they paid for 23 dogs at Metro to be fixed. In 2020, it was 55, and last year it was up to 73. So I just wanted to thank them and the volunteers of that group for their efforts. Uh, if you'd like to volunteer yourself or even work at Metro, we have several openings, I believe, still. So uh, if you'd like to volunteer or work at Metro, please get in touch with them or get in touch with me. I'll make the connection as well. Um, thank you. That's all I have. Council Member Ingebretson. Nothing for me tonight, thanks. Vice Mayor Friel. Uh, CNF, our meeting was supposed to be last night, but we rescheduled the next week just due to a, a conflict of another rodeo. That's it. Uh, not, not much for me. I will be doing the welcome address tomorrow for the Meth and Substance Abuse Conference. Um, it's hard to believe that it's been 18 years in our community. Um, and so, uh, unfortunately, we still have quite an epidemic in our community, our state, um, with not only meth, but substance abuse, uh, opiates, things like that, that I'm sure that our police officers face, but also our providers are facing. So, um, honored to go and do that opening, uh, welcoming uh, tomorrow. So, that's all I have. The next meetings of the City Council will be a work session to be held at 4.30 on Tuesday, April 12th, 2022, um, in the council meeting room, and a regular council meeting to be held at 6 p.m. Tuesday, April 19th, 2022, in the council chambers. A notice of an executive session to take place at this date and during this meeting was given. We have matters to discuss regarding personnel, land acquisition, and litigation. Therefore, the chair would entertain a motion to adjourn into an executive session and at the conclusion of that executive session to reconvene the regular meeting solely for purposes of adjournment for this regular meeting. So moved. Second. Moved by Vice Mayor Friel, seconded by uh, Council Member Ega Bretson. There being a majority of members present and a motion to adjourn into an executive session having been moved and seconded, and that motion requiring a two-thirds majority of the council present, please cast your votes. Please record the vote. With all members voting aye, the motion passes. A greater than two-thirds majority of the council present voted in favor of the motion. We hereby are adjourned into the executive session.